I'm Kelly Reardon, meteorologist at Cleveland.com. I'm here with the City of Cleveland Chief of Sustainability, Matthew Gray. So we are talking about mitigating the effects of climate change. What do you think the biggest negative effect of climate change is, mm. specifically here in Cleveland and Northeast Ohio? When we th think about climate here, um, a colleague likes to say it's, it's getting, um, the climate is getting in warmer, wetter, and weirder. <laughs> so when we think about Cleveland, we've already experienced a 2.5 degree increase um, from about 50 years ago. Um, and that is projected to go even higher. Which sounds subtle, but... That's yeah. not necessarily subtle. Right. I mean, there's projections by 2050 that Cleveland's weather is going to feel more like Tennessee yeah. or even northern Texas. So when you talk about five, six degrees, you're like, oh, can I feel the difference between, mm -hmm. you know, 70 and 75? A little bit. But it has a huge impact. Um, so there's, there's the, the warm air, and that impacts things like air quality, right? Um, and then there's the weather. So what we're already experiencing is that we're getting more rain in Cleveland, um, than we used to, and that rain is coming down in heavier doses. So that has huge impacts uh, for our friends at the uh, sewer district, for instance. Mm -hmm. So we still have about four billion gallons of untreated wastewater going into the lake every year. Wow. It used to be nine billion. Um, they've been doing a great job. Um, but as that water comes down in heavier doses, that means um, more of that untreated water goes into the lake. So it's, um, that's a challenge in terms of that. And that leads to a harmful algal bloom Exactly. Outbreak as well. Exactly. And more lake effect snow in the winter too. It does. Yeah, we're not <laughs> Buffalo in terms of lake effect <laughs> snow, not. but we, we certainly get our share. Let's hope we don't get there. <laughs> um, how are are you personally concerned with future generations in Cleveland with climate change? You know, like right now, some of the hardest hit areas are not in North America, or they're specifically on the coast, um, like with Houston. Um, but do you have a personal concern with Cleveland in the future? I do have a personal concern. Um, I think to events, um, I'm just thinking back to Chicago, for instance, in, in the mid-90s, they had what we might consider as a fairly normal event. They had, um, I think, five or six straight days of temperatures over, I think, 95 degrees. Um, and at the time, it wasn't considered a big deal, but they actually had 700 people die from that event. 700. And that's just from high heat. I mean, mm -hmm. this isn't, you know, what we often think of in terms of, you know, big climate events and hurricanes, which are becoming more common, of course. So those are the kind of things I think in Cleveland we really need as a community to think about um, and say, are we prepared for not just one day of high heat, but prolonged exposure? You know, half of our residents don't have um, access to air conditioning. Mm -hmm. So there are some, you know, vulnerable populations out there. Um, so when that you know, when that heat goes up. So I'm, I'm personally very concerned. Um, you know, when you do the back of the envelope analysis, actually Cleveland is pretty well prepared for climate compared to other regions. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have access to fresh water, one of the <laughs> best fresh water accesses in the world. Um, our, climate, you know, our climate weather is fairly mild, um, and we don't have a lot of natural disasters um, compared to a lot of other areas. So in some ways, you know, we're almost prepared to get people moving from um, other locations mm -hmm. um, as, the, as the climate gets worse and worse. But we have to do our part to make sure that we are prepared as a community. Mm -hmm.